welcome to uh, Rittle University College for this uh, brief how-to slot where we're going to be looking at how to prune uh, shrubs which flower early on in the spring. Hi, so here we are on the 7th of May in the afternoon and Mick and I want to show you how we're going to go ahead and prune this Forsythia cross intermedia which when you look into the RHS pruning groups, this comes in group two, which is one we prune after flowering. We're perhaps maybe two weeks a little late here, but we June shut down, we locked down, we couldn't get here. So this will flower next spring on old wood. Okay? Yeah, so what's really important when we do this is to make sure that we take out the oldest um, wood on here, so it gives new growth from the base. And we do this by what we call thinning, and we usually aim to thin about 20%, although a lot of that depends upon the growth habit we have in it. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you a little bit about the pruning cuts, and then we're going to actually um, get on with um, uh, pruning it so you can see how this looks before and then afterwards. So the first piece of material we're going to take out is this older stem, possibly two to three years old. And it's you don't really have to look for a bud but just to sort of rather assume where they might be because none are really very clear so using your pruning saw cut straight through and already this is actually in fact we've taken out quite a percentage of the shrub. What would you imagine, Mick? Um, 10% here has gone in one branch? I'm guessing there's at least 10%. Here. Yeah. Okay, so that's sort of you know opened it up. And now the next thing is the other types of material we will remove. So make sure that you're using the right sort of size um, loppers or secateurs for it. So I'm, I'm gonna remove this one, and I think this is quite easy with a pair of secateurs to cut that right back. And if you look in here, we've got some lovely new growth coming through, which is actually growing far more upright. So this can come out of the way. Then we've got this branch here. We could cut it back to there to let that one go through, or we could take it the whole way back. Do you reckon, Mick, the whole way back? I think that's okay. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think it's fine there. So coming on through here, we've got some very thin, spindly growth. And really, if you think about it, the sort of thin spindly growth is not really ever going to produce a very good flower. So that's another one we can cut right back through here and come right out and the one beside it. And then what I want you to have a little look at, which is quite interesting in here, which I want to see if Mick can get it into focus, is this. I'm actually going to cut it out because we don't want this growth. But this is a piece of fasciation material here. Right, what we have here is that fasciated branch which I showed you before and you see with fasciation it's a better example than the first one we showed you just happen to find this while we're pruning it's good this one because what it shows you is the normal growth there and the fasciated growth which has started down here but it's grown out of it now lots of plants fasciate okay so we see I'll sit back here we see this lots of plants fasciate you can see there's buds on the side there but this is ribbon like growth if you look at this bit here Although it's a little bit flattened again, we see the round growth here. Normally, the vascular cambium on the plant is in a circle, so it grows outwards. Okay? What happens with fasciation is it becomes inverted, so it starts to grow upward, along them. So it starts to grow this way, okay? so moving up the plant that way. And that causes this ribbon-like growth. So the cambium is actually growing in a, in a peculiar way. It's not that uncommon, although it's, it's fairly um, unusual, it only happens in some species. Reasons why it occurs can vary, it can be because of a hormonal imbalance, it's one of the commonest, but uh, various bacteria, virus and physiological stresses can bring this on. Uh, genetic mutations can cause it as well, and there are some plants where the genetic mutation has been um, taken as a sort of uh, a positive thing, so some of the cristate cacti that you see, and uh, also some of the um, things like, say for instance, um, the coxcomb masses you get on some conifers such as cryptomeria 
uh, they're actually fasciations which occur regularly and they've been used to um, horticultural display advantage. The celiosis, the coxcomb celiosa is also a, a fasciation which has been perpetuated in the plants. So that's what I mean by fasciation, just a ribbon-like growth in the plant. So really it's unwanted material but it's quite um, fascinating in how it grows but always to cut it out. If you look here, you see where my elegant finger is. Um, you can see the previous um, pruning cuts. And there's quite a few things there you can see which have been really done incorrectly. So it's sort of a half a cut. And it's not a good clean cut going through the center there. What we've got to avoid with this is this will be full of um, decaying matter and it looks unsightly. So really the cut perhaps should have gone lower down to here. So when you're making your cuts, try and ensure that you're making the, le the least amount of cut area proportionally to make the surface area um, nice and small in your cut. So you can remove it there. Okay, and then if we look here, also there's another one. I think I might, if I try to remove this old cut now, I might end up doing more harm than good. Yeah. Yeah. But if we also see in here, there's other material we want to remove, anything dead as well. And you can see other bits of old dead material. So we can cut those out. We've got these two opposite buds. So I want to cut just above those. Okay, so that's opening it up there. And then here, this is a bit of a thicker, older piece of wood. So using the loppers going between those two buds there, we're going to remove these as well. And I probably will work, rework on that cut because it might be a, a little high. So getting the secateurs in here. It's quite interesting when you look at this um, wood here, it always has a hollow pith. So if you can sort of see here, we've got these little holes. It's quite a good way to help you to identify for Zyvia and these very clear lentil cells. And then what we can also do is we can then start to slightly thin it out. You want to make it um, quite good for air movement going through the shrub as well, which this stops things like infections from fungal and, um, damage as well. Plus it makes the shrub look more aesthetically pleasing. This one here is my next one to come on out. Here we have a very thin, um, weak growth, which can be removed. Okay, so we've been looking at taking out the dead wood, the older, thicker growth. So now Mick and I are just going to work on it together and just sort of make it look more as sort of aesthetically pleasing. So we're going to work on this pretty quickly, so you'll have to make sure that you catch up. So it's secretaires to the ready, and off we go. Remember to stand back and then look at your work to see where it's not balanced and things like that. judgment and then we're going to just finish off so don't go away so there we are Charlotte's just finishing off the last few bits now I'm sure you're amazed at the speed we work look we've even got a bit of sweat on working at that pace the whole point you see now what you should be able to see here is we've done two things we said we're going to thin these and that's what we did but normally you would thin them 20% a year every year and these as you probably guessed 
were a little bit overdue in terms of their um, annual service. So we've actually reduced the height of some of these because we've taken out quite a lot more material. So by reducing the height, we'll encourage a little bit of side shooting, which will mean we'll get uh, a more bountiful amount of flowering next spring. Next spring, after they've flowered, we'll come in and we'll start with the 20% cycle. We'll get out the remainder of some of the older growth. Hopefully by then, some of this new growth at the base will have shot. And um, please avert your eyes from the weeds. <laughs> so there's been a lockdown and we're down to very few gardens at the moment. And so that's it. That's what you would do now. We would get this down to this sort of uh, level. It looks like we've done a real hack job. We have there's a lot of material to be taken off, but it will now grow through the summer and that's where your flower will come from next year. And the other sort of uh, post pruning operations we can be looking at is obviously weeding around the base. We probably missed the boat with mulching. That, that would be better done maybe two months ago. But we also could, if we feel they need it, feed as well to actually to Absolutely, help them yeah. for their whole regeneration. Yeah. Um, and, but it's, you know, but hopefully it'd be quite nice if we can come back next year and just show you, you know, how well they flower really. I mean, the point about feeding, if you think about it, um, if you had an operation, you'd have to convalesce and they'd be giving you all sorts of, not only medicines, but making sure you're eating the right type of food and looking at your diet. You have to do the same with your plants. If you've just given them a major operation, as we've given these here, they are, they've lost a huge amount of foliage because they have to be cut so late. And so, of course, that means that the roots haven't got an awful lot of food left in them. They've got to grow rapidly in order to make more food to make a robust and healthy plant for the next year. And they can only do that if they've got sufficient nutrient. And a, a good purpose, sort of a, a, a feed, you know, an all-purpose feed, like a fish blood and bone, uh, grow more, organic grow more if you prefer organic things, something like a hoof and horn, whatever it is, put that down now. But what you don't need to do with shrubs is coming out with watering cans and liquid feeding and give them a good feed at a standard dose of a natural fertiliser this time of the year and that will be sufficient. Yeah, we wouldn't recommend um, any watering or irrigation now because these are very well established shrubs. They've probably been in planted maybe 10 to 15 years. If they were newly planted, then we would, but you know, this they don't um, Charlotte won't it. thank me for saying this, but me and her pruned these on one of the first practicals I did in my first year, 20, 20 years ago. 20. <laughs> But we'll, we'll, we'll probably edit that bit out, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's a, a job well done. So. Um.